Within fields and forces, if you look at the data booklet uh, for topic six, you'll see these main equations here. I've uh, laid out this one right here to look just like uh, what the one looks like in your uh, data booklet. I mean, there's solid lines there. I just didn't want to confuse things too much, but uh, this is the way it looks in your data booklet. Of course, uh, in your data booklet, this comes next, and then there's these ones. So I'm going to talk to you about each of these equations because they're actually extremely important and they do a lot of things for us. But I find the key challenge for students is just knowing what each of these letters means. Once you know that, it's actually pretty easy. There's really usually not much that they're asking you to do except for just use these equations. But you do have to know really well what everything means. So first of all, what I want to show you is that they've actually arranged it in a really cool way. Uh, when they had the older syllabus, it was actually a lot more messed up. This one is, is put together, I think, quite, um, quite beautifully. I think. Uh, and the reason is, look at this. We have F equals GMM over R squared. And we have, whoops, uh, I think they actually write it as M1, M2. Uh, that's my mistake. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, actually, I'm just going to redraw it like this. It actually looks like this in your data booklet. There we go. So what this means is that this first column here, those are for gravitational. So that's what all this stuff right here represents, like this stuff right here. It's gravitational, and the stuff over here is electric. And what I really like is that when you look at this, you can actually see how these things are related. Because if you look, look how similar the gravitational one looks to the electric. And look how similar the gravitational this looks like this electric one. So they're, they're similar in nature. So, what I want to do is, first of all, explain what each of these uh, does for us. This one right here is um, one of the most commonly known ones. This is actually known as Newton's uh, Universal Law of Gravitation. Okay, so F is the gravitation. I'm just going to write grav force. And that's measured in Newtons. Okay, that's what F is. Okay, F is just gravitational force in Newtons. G it's just some constant. It's just a number you can look up. Okay, you can look it up in your data booklet. Uh, it's 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, uh, and it's got some weird units, but basically G is nothing but a constant. Well, M1 and M2, those are just masses, which are measured in uh, kilograms, and R is the distance between objects, and that's measured in meters. So what this tells you is this is the gravitational force between two massive objects, I mean massive as in has mass, um, depending on their distance away from each other. This is just a constant, so don't worry too much about the g, but basically it tells you that uh, you know, two objects that have mass, if I leave them be, um, let's say you're out in outer space, there's just two objects, they're going to eventually come towards each other. That's because those two objects have a gravitational attractive force between those two masses. So if I knew the mass of one object, the mass of the other one, and I knew the distance between them, then I could know the force. And once I know the force, if you remember uh, Newton's laws, you can then uh, use that force to get you an acceleration, because F equals ma. And from that, then, you can take a look at uh, how fast something will be going or how long it takes to go a certain distance. So really, really powerful stuff here with this one. I think this is a very, very important one. Now, um, over here, F here is just the gravit uh, sorry, that's the electric force between two objects. That's also measured in Newtons. And what's cool about it is that K is also a constant. So K right here, that's just a constant as well. It's some number you can look up. And that's in your data booklet as well. And then Q, each of the Qs, those are charges. So we have Q1 and Q2, and those are just the charges, and those are measured in coulombs. And of course, R is still the distance between them. So this tells you about the electric force between two objects that have a certain charge at a certain distance away. Now, gravitational force is always attractive, 
but electric force can be attractive or uh, repelling depending on the charges, right? If it's positive, positive, they're going to be repelling force, whereas if it's a positive and a negative, they're going to be an attractive force. If it's negative, negative, they're also going to be repelling. So this just tells you the electric force between two objects with different charges, doesn't matter what they are, uh, at a certain distance away. This also tells you the fact that both of them have 1 over r squared, uh, that tells you that you know, the force goes down very quickly with distance. Right? So if you go you know, twice as far away, you've actually had the force go down by 4, right? because 1 over 2 squared is 4. So that's important. Um, and usually those don't give students too many problems. However, uh, this one right here, whoops, this one right over here, that one I don't think is so important. And the reason is that it looks, this is actually for electric things. So this is just like this one, except K can be rewritten. Okay, so K turns out can actually be written as 1 over 4 pi times some constant called epsilon 0. And you can look these up on your equation, uh, on your data booklet, but I think this is a bit silly. I don't know why they bothered putting this in. It's just a matter of calling k something else. So if you look, if you replaced k with just 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, you have the same equation. So I wouldn't worry too much about that one. The important one, though, is this one right here. This, g equals a gravitational field strength. This is important, okay? And this is actually measured in, and you can see what the units would be. Well, it's equal to F over M. We know what F is, it's a force. M is a mass, so it would be measured in newtons per kilogram. But G is the important thing here, okay? G is the gravitational field strength. Now you might think, oh, what is that G? Doesn't that look like what we call G uh, on Earth? Yes. In fact, the gravitational field strength on Earth uh, at sea level is 9.81 meters per second squared. And you might think, well then, uh, why don't we just say this is always 9.81? Well, because now what I like about this uh, topic is that we're not just talking about Earth. Now we could be on any planet or in any moon or anywhere we want, and we can figure out what the gravitational field strength will be anywhere. All we have to do is put in this right here. So g m1 m2 over r squared, that's f. I just divide that by one of the m's. So in other words, the gravitational field strength would just be gm over r squared. And that means that if you want to know, uh, an r, by the way, in that case, is normally the, um, the distance from the object to the center of mass of the other object. So if you're on Earth, for example, and you want to know what's going to be the gravitational field strength at the surface of the Earth, well, then you, know how, you have to know how, uh, what's the radius of the Earth. It's 6,000-ish uh, kilometers. I can't remember exactly what it is, but it's uh, 6,000 and something kilometers. Um, so if you put that in for R, and then um, and you put in well, what G is, and you put in what uh, the mass of the Earth is, then you can actually figure out the gravitational field strength at any distance away from the center of the Earth. And it turns out that's how you can calculate uh, if G will change when you're on Mount Everest, for example, which is higher from the center of the Earth. It turns out it barely changes. But this doesn't just work on Earth, this works for any planet. So for example, you could be on the Moon and say, well, what will the gravitational um, field strength be on the Moon? And again, just gmm over r squared, just divide it by one of the m's. That's all this is, right? You take f and divide it by m. This is f. So that means you can find the gravitational field strength on the moon if you want. Um, and you can do this at any distance from any object. That's why I think these are really powerful equations. And this g, it turns out, gives you, you know, 9.81 if you calculate it properly on the Earth. Uh, on the surface of the Earth, you'll get very close to 9.81. But the cool thing is then you can say, well, what's G if I'm higher? Or what if I could dig really deep in the earth? What would it be? Well, just change your R value. That's all you're doing. You can calculate what G would be. Now, what about this one over here? This is, if you know how it works for gravity, you know how it works over here. So this was called gravitational field strength with G. So E, big surprise, is called electric field strength. And that's measured in, let's see what units it should be. Well, this is force, so that's newtons. And this is charge, so that's measured in coulombs. So it's newtons per coulomb. So 
So that, I think, is quite important. Uh, then we have um, these magnetic ones here. Okay, those equations right there, those work for, oops, I should probably make this right here blue and say, these are for magnetic. Okay, those are really important as well. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually uh, just do another video and I'm just gonna show you what those actually stand for. I just uh, wanna make sure that uh, everything's okay here. So magnetic ones, this will tell you magnetic force and this will be another magnetic force. It's going to depend on a few other things here.